the Chicago vlog. I'm so excited to be in Chicago, mostly because there are tons of bookstores that I want to go to while I'm here and I just feel like I don't know, I don't get to come here often to just like browse bookstores and this weekend, a big part of this weekend is for that. So I just got here, I got here a little bit later than I wanted, but Semicolon Books, which is a black woman bookstore I've told you guys so much about. It is huge, they have tons of like wrecks and stuff. They're open until seven, so I'm gonna rush over there because it's like 10 after six. Hopefully I can get there in the like rush hour and stuff. Um, it's not too far from here, but I want to go over there because I want to make sure that I get there first. Um, the last time I came to Chicago, I wasn't able to go there because they weren't open on Sunday and we weren't able to get there on Saturday. So I just want to go there first, just like get it out of the way and make sure I get there. And if I want to go back, I can. But there are like five other bookstores I want to get to while I'm here. I'm not sure if I'll get to them all. I went to Open Books the last time I was here in Chicago. I will link that video if you guys want to watch it. Um, but it just... The books in Chicago, I feel like, have so much diversity, and I really love coming here for that specific reason, but I'm staying in a really nice hotel that I stay in every single time that I am in Chicago. I've stayed here probably since, I don't know, like the last, at least the last like five years, like every time that I come. It's pretty affordable, and it's right down, like it's within walking distance of like the bean and stuff, um, so let me show you guys what it looks like. Is when you first walk in they have this pull-out couch um, and then if you walk into this area it is a big open suite which is really nice they have other options that aren't like suites and stuff but I just like the suite because I feel like it gives me a lot more space and I just literally love staying here the bathroom and one of my favorite parts of the bathroom is that they have these individual soaps I know this sounds like so like such a small thing but they have body wash shampoo and conditioner like a full bottle so you don't have to worry about like just saving it and then obviously just regular bathroom stuff on the other side i'm gonna be joined by my cousins tomorrow they're coming in and we're gonna like go out and i'm gonna get brunch with one of my friends uh jordan tomorrow i think and do lots of like fun chicago like going out vibe type stuff which i like never do at home so i'm gonna have to literally like rally but I want to make sure that I also get in a lot of like museums and like slower type things because you guys know that that's more my vibe. Um, there's like a color place called the Color Factory that I really want to go to so I might go there um, and it just looks like it's like a fun time. So I'm going to go over to the bookstore. They do have an event that starts at 7 so I might stay if like I... Feel like it but then i also kind of want to go get dinner because i'm super hungry so we'll just kind of see where the night takes us but we're going to head over to the bookstore first so i'm going through the color factory right now because the bookstore is going to be closed by the time i got there so let's head in here this looks like so much fun macaroons just come all the way through all the way around and you can pick whichever ones you want that's so cool game we're supposed to guess like the color of the pop rocks and I feel like I got all of them wrong number two I said was red and number two was <laughs> green gonna put that back didn't realize this was so hard I did number five and I said I thought the color was yellow and number five is oh my gosh number five was red that's crazy and then number four, I said I thought it was brown, and <gasps> number four was brown, yay! Okay, I got one right, but these were hard. I said number two was um, red, and it was green. This is kind of interesting. It's hard to like pinpoint the color with like the taste. It's so interesting. This is so cute. This room is full of compliments. And it says that you deserve a compliment. It's so cute.
they have ice cream in the ball pit and I feel like a literal kid. I feel like whenever I come to places like this where it's like adults doing kid stuff, it's just like so fun. And I feel like there needs to be more places like this. I'm probably eating most of the ice cream, but uh, it's really good. It's like honeydew melon, which is a really interesting flavor, but it matches the room in here. So this looks like they have a bunch of scents. As we pair 16 scents with colors to further explore the link between sight and smell. I love things that have to do with smell and taste. Those are like my favorites. Um, it says smells have a way of taking us down memory lane. So let's see what they have. They have orange your dream. I wonder what this one is. I'm really gonna like this. I don't know. What is that? Interesting. Oh, that's that says best part of the rainbow cone. That sounds good. Do you want to build a snowman? Is this snow? Oh, nostalgia right there. Polar vortex. Can't place that one. Okay, this is laundry day. This is gonna give me nightmares. <laughs> okay, it does smell like clean laundry. That's a nice feeling. Not dirty laundry. So fresh, so clean. This passenger of your best friend drive and it literally smells like you're in a car. Not even a new car, just like a car. This is new car smells. That smells so nostalgic. It's crazy. So look at the bottom of your bowl. Mm -mm, I don't like that one. got back in my room and I'm ready to get on my cute little pajamas. Maybe I'll actually save these for tomorrow when the girls are here. Actually, no, because we're just going to be like coming in from like going out and stuff. I'm going to wear these today. I am absolutely exhausted. I have no idea how I'm going to stay up tomorrow like when we go out. I'm going to have to take a nap, literally. I brought four books with me because I knew that part of this trip was gonna be just like very relaxing. I'm gonna show you guys those books in a second. But um, I feel like there's absolutely no way I'm gonna finish them. Right now I'm still finishing up Reggie and Delilah's Year of Falling and it is really, really cute. It's definitely exceeding my expectations of like what I thought it would be. I went to a restaurant downstairs and I actually ended up reading in the restaurant and it makes me, like it reminds me of when I used to be really nervous for solo dates and to do stuff by myself. Um, like for a long time, I was very nervous to do things alone. And now I really relish in that time. And I feel like it helps me learn how to love myself better. Like the more things I do by myself, I really learn like what I actually like. Because if you think about it, if you only do things with other people, how will you know like what you truly enjoy if like that person's extracted you know like there's a lot of experiences that i think are elevated with people and there's a lot of experiences that i don't necessarily enjoy but when i do it with someone else it's like fun you know and so i feel like doing things alone helps me realize like what i actually like doing and it also helps me like show love to myself in a funny way and, and because i'm showing love to myself it gives me confidence in myself to know that I don't like really need anyone else. Like of course I love and want like my partners and stuff like in my life, but I feel like when I was in like high school or middle school, I always felt like I had to have like my family and I had to have a husband or a boyfriend or I had to have best friends or I had to have all these things. Otherwise I wouldn't be a fulfilling life. And now like I've realized that one of the biggest and most fulfilling things is to love myself because it helps other people love me better and like i would be okay regardless like of whatever situation i'm in so anyway that's why i enjoy like these little solo dates and solo trips um i feel like they're really important i brought so much random stuff like i always bring so many perfumes i brought two perfumes from my Labo, which I think I want to go there tomorrow because I really feel like they have some of the best perfumes. I like to bring different options for perfumes. So I brought another 13, which is a really good smelling one. This one kind of, it has a unique smell. I can't explain how it smells. 
it smells different on everyone's skin too it's like it's kind of light and airy but also has kind of like a little bit of a woody scent and then santal is incredible it has like a sweet um like woody type fragrance and then this one is um lancome and it's very very sweet like super super sweet and then this one is kind of sultry and this is um the uh something carlina i forget her Car carlina herrera i don't know anyway it looks like this shoe and it smells very sultry and like sexy so yeah anyway i'm gonna put all this stuff up get my pajamas and i'm gonna show you guys the books that i brought I genuinely don't know if there's anything cozier than getting in bed after a shower in like nice clean hotel sheets with like ice cold water and a book. I just really don't think that there is. I just feel so like cozy. I actually was kind of not sure if I was going to shower or not because I already showered this morning and then I was like, you know what, just let me shower. Like I traveled, whatever. I feel kind of like sticky, whatever. I feel so glad that I'm just so glad I showered but um, I want to show you guys the books that I ended up bringing with me um, I brought them truly because I want this weekend to be full of reading I want to just relax and I feel like sometimes I don't get that time at home because I like work so much so I show you what I brought I brought part of your world which this is a book that I didn't realize but the new book that came out by Abby Jimenez, Jimenez um, that I just showed you guys in my last vlog, I think that book is like a part two to this one. I, don't quote me on that one but I feel like it is. Um, so I want to read this one first. I've never read anything of hers um, and it says after a wild bet, gourmet grilled cheese sandwich and cuddle... wait what? After a wild bet, grilled gourmet grilled cheese sandwich and a cuddle with the baby goat alexis montgomery i was so confused by how that was written alexis montgomery has had her world turned upside down the cause daniel grant a ridiculously hot carpenter carpenter who's 10 years younger than her and as casual as they come the complete opposite of sophisticated city girl alexis and yet their chemistry is undeniable with her ultra wealthy parents while her ultra wealthy parents you can tell i'm tired oh my god want her to carry on the family legacy of world-renowned surgeons alexis doesn't need glory or fame she's fine with being a mere er doctor and every minute she spends with daniel in the tight-knit town where she lives she's discovering just what's really important yet letting their relationship become anything more than a short-term fling would mean turning her back on her family and giving up the opportunity to help thousands of people Bringing Daniel into her world is impossible, and yet she can't just give up the joy she's found with him either. With so many differences between them, how can Alexis possibly choose between her world or his? So this is, I think, the first book and the second book that just came out. I bought it. It's like a red cover. I forget what it's even called. Um, the next book that I brought is like a shorter book because I feel like when I'm on vacation, um, I do like reading shorter books because I can get into it faster. My least favorite thing about a book is getting into a new book. So whenever I can like read it fast, it just like helps me so much more. And this says in eight years, Marlon Jamie will be one of the brightest rising stars in the music industry. But wait, oh my gosh, I'm so tired. To tell. I don't know how I'm going to stay up tomorrow. It's n like not even 10 o'clock yet and I am like about to be lights out. I'm gonna have to take a nap tomorrow. Um, Bristol Gray will be his tough, no-nonsense manager. But when they first meet, she's a college student finding her way in the world and he's an artist determined to make his way in it. From completely different worlds all the way, all the things that should separate them only draw them closer. It's a beautiful beginning, but where will the story end? Flo chronicles the first week of magical days and nights that will haunt Grip and Bristol for years to come. And I'm pretty sure that like the second book is called Grip, I think. So this is like a whole series. Um, it's called the Grip Trilogy. I'm pretty sure like Grip is the second one. I could be wrong. But yeah, so I brought this one. Then I also brought this one, which I've been meaning to read for a while. It comes out um, May 23rd and I got 
like the I think it's called arc uh, I don't get a lot of these this is like my third one that I've gotten and I always want to give so much time and attention to these books because I feel so honored obviously to read any book but when someone wants me to read a book before it's even released I just feel like an immense amount of honor and I want to do the book justice and be able to give it like a thorough review and like really be focused on it because I feel like sometimes if I'm like not in the right headspace or not relaxed like that can also play a part in how I receive a book if that makes sense maybe I'm like weird but like I don't know I feel like if I'm just like grumpy or like a lot's going on in my life and the book has like maybe intricate details or something I could be like oh like the book was too slow well really maybe it's not too slow maybe I just don't have the capacity to like slow down if that makes sense so on a vacation I feel like it gives me the best like ability to just slow down and really like focus in on this and this says Darren Armstrong lives in his head there he can pine for his crush, total dream girl Del Delia Dawson, in peace, away from the unsolicited opinions of his talkative family and showboat friends. When Delia announces a theme song contest for her popular podcast, Dilly D in the, in the Place to Be, Darren's friends, convinced he'll never make a move, submit one of his secret side projects for consideration. After the anonymous romantic verse catches Dilly's ear, she sets out to uncover the mystery singer behind the track. Now Darren must decide, is he ready to step out of the shadows and take the lead in his own life? This just looks so cute. I feel like I need to read this one next. It's just everything. I feel like it's going to be such a good book. And then the last book that I brought is The Housemaid. I've heard that this is really good. I think it's about someone who like goes in to be a housemaid at someone's house and then while they're like cleaning and like being the housemaid they see all these things that are crazy that happen that like shouldn't happen um so yeah I don't know that honestly seems like a little scary so I feel like if I read this it'll be on like Sunday I don't want to read it before bed you know especially when I'm like not in my own home so yeah we'll see but these are all of the four books that I brought I like to have options not I don't like to bring four books necessarily because I'm going to finish them all, but I do like to bring a lot of books because I might be like, you know what, after my book that I'm reading, after I finish this one, I might be like, oh, I'm going to read A Housemate. But then once I actually finish the book, I might be like, actually, I'm still in a romance mood. So like, I want to read a romance. So that's why I bring all of them. And um, I feel like there's a lot of other people who bring lots of books on vacation too. I can't be the only one. So I'm going to go to bed um, after I read a little bit more. And tomorrow we're going to do like a little bookstore tour. I want to go to a ton of different bookstores and oh, uh, hopefully it's going to be a good time. I for sure need a nap tomorrow though. So anyway, I will see you guys in the morning. Do you ever feel you don't get out what you're putting in? Books I've never heard of. I ended up getting two books in there, and I like 
literally gotten so many more, but I wanna wait to go to the other bookstores because I just feel like I'm gonna get even more um, books while I'm there. I'm getting ready to go to brunch right now um, with one of my friends, and then after that we'll go to, I think I have two more bookstores written down. That bookstore was so nice because they had so much like natural light in there and it was so like busy and packed. I feel like that's where everyone wants to be on a Saturday. And I feel like since it's such nice weather, everyone also wants to be out. But after we leave um, brunch, I'm gonna try to go to three bookstores, but I feel like we'll realistically get to two. But I was pretty fast in there. Um, I've been kind of trying to give myself enough time to browse where I'm not gonna feel like I'm gonna be rushed from one like bookstore to the next so um yeah i just had the best experience and i feel like if i lived in chicago it's been so much money just on books alone because i feel like when i find books especially diverse books i'm usually getting wrecks from other people whereas i feel like in the independent bookstores here you can browse a lot more and find like a lot more i don't know books that people just like haven't talked about, which I feel like is even more fun because then you kind of start the conversation. So anyway, my Uber's almost here. We're gonna head to brunch and then go to the next bookstore after that. Life is a winding road. No telling where it goes. Driving through days and nights. Don't stop for traffic lights. And I... I just got done eating with Jordan. And it's always so fun seeing people who one work in the same space as you, who also are black and who just have such a genuine, like kind heart. Like Jordan is so nice. Um, but now I'm going to the bookstore that I was most excited to go to, Semi Colon Books, which is the independent black woman bookstore. It's like a pretty big bookstore. So um, yeah, we're gonna go there and I'm hoping that I can find a couple more books. It's definitely a lot later than I thought it would be. It's almost one o'clock. So I'm not really sure how many more bookstores I'll be able to go to. Cause my cousin said they'll be here at 2.30. So I think I can go to two more. So this one and then maybe one more after that. And then um, I'm gonna head back to the hotel. I wanna take a nap and I think maybe I'll take a nap while they are shopping maybe because I need one before we go out. Like there's absolutely no way that I'm not going to absolutely pass out if I don't take a nap. So I'm gonna take a nap. But today has been so fun. I feel like a big part of why Chicago is so fun whenever I come visit is when the weather is like this. It's so nice. It's literally, um, I think it's like 80, 73, 77 degrees, which is the first time in a long time that it's been this nice here. So. Yeah, anyway, I will see you guys when we get to the bookstore. I'm really excited. I haven't like ever been there and that's the one I was most excited for. Last time I was in Chicago, it um, wasn't open whenever I went. So I'm like crossing my fingers that they'll still be open whenever I go and I can find some good books on there. Can't believe I live in your thoughts. I think about you all the time, morning, evening, and midnight. Such a wonderful delight Forgo Give up everything that I own Yeah, I'd give it all up now Just to be with you somehow Unexpected love was found You're the rose in a garden I would literally sell my soul to live in Chicago so I could come here every day. The vibes in here are so, like I can't explain it. Like no bookstore I've ever seen. It literally feels like I'm at my auntie's house. Like, you know, just hanging out. The vibes I are so immaculate. Like I just, 
I feel like spaces like this need to be created because they're not and I feel so like welcome here comfortable like they have so many good books I could literally stay in here for days I'm in the used book section down here I kind of want to go back upstairs to the new books I feel like I'm used to being around used books um they have lots of totes and stuff let me show you guys they have totes down here it says this tote bag is for books only and then on the bottom it says semicolon bookstore i saw that on their instagram and then they have t-shirts guys if you live in chicago even if you don't live in chicago you have to come here the vibe is incredible <laughs> Oh my gosh. No, it just makes me hungry. It's wild. Yeah, just a little funny. I'm getting ready to go get in the Uber. I have like five minutes until I come and I got so many books while I'm in here. Probably more than any of the bookstores that I'll go to. And I feel like it's because the diversity that they have in here is literally incredible. Like so, so good. And guys. I bought another one, another book. Um, I bought a second copy of this book because the author was in here while I was in here. And I asked her to write a like personalized like thing in the front of the book and she did. So I bought a second copy, had to. Honestly, as I was leaving, I was like, oh, is it like cringe to ask? And literally she was so humble, so nice. And I was like, I've heard so many good things about this book. That's why I've already bought this book. Like, everyone on TikTok and Instagram is like obsessed with it and she was like oh my god really like no way like oh like that's so sweet and she was just like so humble and she I was like um can I get like a signed copy and um the girl that was with her was like oh all of those copies are signed I was like oh okay cool she's like but I can make a personalized one I was like oh I don't want to like make you have to like do extra work if you don't want to and she's like oh like well do you want one I was like yes I want one of course I want one she was just like so sweet and like humble and kind and just like I, just so so nice so I what she wrote she said moments like these are things I dreamed of when I shared writing thank you for making my day hope you have the best one guys uh, I am freaking out this is de this is going to be the next book that I read. literally gonna be the next book that I read and I feel like meeting an author who she said that she wrote this book while she was in isolation she said that like no one read it like not even her husband or anything he didn't even know that she was writing the book and then she like shared her story and I think that that's so cool just being able to like I don't know like create something without any other feedback or like anyone like giving you any like thoughts about it until it's done I just think that's neat so this is gonna be the next book so TBR right after I finish what I'm reading right now because it's science and she was so freaking sweet and she's so like nervous and oh guys just this is just everything in the hotel and I got like a huge thing of books and I want to show you guys what I got I want to try to go to like I don't know a ton more bookstores tomorrow I'm so tired right now it is only 7 13 we're gonna try to take a nap before we like go out and stuff I took off my jewelry and like I'm getting ready to like get ready to take a quick nap because I am just not gonna make it like out tonight unless I take a nap um my eyes are really like just bloodshot red uh, I kind of want to show you the books that I got, but I don't want to show you them as well because I don't know if I'll have enough time to like really show you what I got. So I'm going to show you the stack. It is huge. I got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight books. <laughs> and uh, I, oh wait, no, no, no. One of them was the one I'm already reading. So I got seven. And I'm just going to show you one of them. Because I already showed you on rotation, which I already own this at home. Haven't read it yet, but I wanted to get the signed copy by the author while she was in there. And then the other one that I want to show you is, um, I'll show you this one. So I got this book because um, a YouTuber that, or a booktuber that I've been watching, I forget her name, but I shared her channel on like one of my um, videos that showed like a bunch of different black booktubers. I cannot remember her name literally i'll try to like put some on the screen if i can like remember it but she said that this was one of her favorite books 
like she's ever read it's called the coldest winter ever by sister soldier so i was like i need to read this um because the way she explained it just sounded like it would be really really good and it says renowned hip-hop artist political activist and best-selling author brings the streets of new york to life in a powerful and unfor un utterly unforgettable first novel um and she said this was her favorite favorite book i am going to go through every book tomorrow but i guess i can go through like quickly each book then i also got um black girls must be magic because um black girls die exhausted and then black girls uh oh, what's the other one the second one i can't remember um they're all in a series and this is the last book in the series so i want to make sure i get the whole thing then i got um happily ever afters by Elise Bryant who's the same author of Reggie and Delilah's Year Falling and this book is so good that I just wanted to get another one. I will say I don't really read YA very often because I mean I'm like 30 years old so a lot of these books are like, like I don't want to read about like kids you know like I just feel like some of the storylines I'm like a little bit past like I don't want to hear about like someone who's like oh my god I have to turn my school homework like I don't know I just I'm like I don't really it's hard to resonate and I don't think I necessarily have to resonate with every single character I read about but I feel like I'm constantly reading those books I don't know it just gets like a little old so I like to sprinkle them in here like in there whenever I need like a break from a heavier book so I got this and then I got this book it's called Black Buck and it's about a black guy who he's 22 and he works at this like marketing firm I think and I guess he's like the only black guy who's there and he goes through like their hell week of training which is like super super hard um and then he I guess tries to get a, a plan to help young people that are black infiltrate the sales force at his job and like get higher up and I guess it sets off a crazy chain of events and it's supposed to be like a comedy like a sat satire type book like satirical novel it's like comedy so i'm excited to read this one um and then i also got night crawling i've heard that this book is like a thriller and it was actually written by a girl who was really young i think and it was on uh, oprah's book club um list and it was a new york times bestseller so i don't know i like reading books by young um authors and then the last one that i got i got both of these books at um the exile in bookville and then i got all of these books at uh semicolon books which was truly one of the like best bookstores i've ever been to uh and it was really cool to meet the author while she was there and this last book that i got is called the unfortunates this i think is the one i'm most excited about it says sahara is not okay entering her sophomore year she already feels like a failure her body is too much her love life is non-existent she's not nigerian enough for her family her grades are subpar and well the few black classmates she has are vanishing or dying sahara or sahara sahara herself is close to giving up depression has been her longtime life partner she believes that this narrative taking the form of an of an irreverent no holds barred thesis addresses addressed to the powerful university committee that will judge her may be her last chance to document the unfortunate experiences before she joins their ranks but maybe just maybe she and her complex community of bipoc women aren't ready to go out without a fight an edgy bitingly funny debut about a half nigerian college student who enraged and exhausted by the racism at her elite college is determined to reveal the truth about the unfortunates the unlucky subset of black undergrads who just keep disappearing so i'm really excited to read this one and then in the inside there's like a ton of like pictures and this looks like text from a journal um just like lots of like little it looks like it almost is like a journal or a diary there's like emails in it um this whole part i don't even know what this is but it looks like it's just inside of a textbook there's like drawing so i just like books like that where it feels like very real so um yeah those are all the books that i got and i don't feel like i really need to go much more in depth because i've been talking for six minutes um but i am gonna go to a couple more bookstores tomorrow i really want to go to four because i want to go to six in total but if i shop the way that i did today at two more bookstores tomorrow i might only go to four but there's just so many and there's so many diverse books that i've never heard of like this the coldest winter ever the girl who said that this book was really good i was like oh i want to read it it was not at barnes like it's very hard to find books at barnes and noble that are about like diverse stories unless it's very popular 
like on rotation was there but it's like been like a very popular book this book wasn't there this book wasn't there this book wasn't there this book wasn't there night crawling was there but i feel like books like this will be there because it's on oprah's book club um list or books that are on like reese witherspoon's book club list like those will be there but the books that are just like not really hyped up yet are not going to be at barnes if they're about black people and black stories because i feel like most of the time people don't see those as valuable until they're popular so i like reading books like by you know black authors whether they're popular or not because just because they're not popular doesn't mean that they're not good so this is the stack and now i'm gonna try to take a nap for the next like 30 minutes before we need to get up um and yeah we went out to eat and now i feel like i just have a food coma and i need to go to sleep so uh yeah i hope you guys enjoy this little haul and i'm excited to do some more book shopping tomorrow make sure to bring a coat because it could be any weather i'm going to go into um this next store and i have one more to go to after this i'm excited to see who's in this one I got a good amount of books, but I feel like if I lived in a town like this, I literally would not ever go to Barnes & Noble, mostly because there are just so many good places to shop for books here, and I feel like like everyone is so nice and just, I don't know, I really enjoy being in the cozy spaces. Um, so yeah, I ended up getting one, two, three, four, five different books. Um, so yeah, actually I think I'm going to walk through these books when I'm in the car um, just because it's a little like loud in here so I'm gonna get my bags and like my car and stuff and then once I get that we can, um, I'll walk through all the books. But I had a really great trip with the girls and I truly like don't feel like this is gonna be the last time I do like a little book tour like this. I feel like I'm definitely gonna do this again. Um, so yeah, let's head to the car and then I'll show you guys the books that I got once we get there. you guys all the books that I got um, before I show you guys the books I want to show you my cute tote look at this isn't this the cutest thing it's a slow morning sipping coffee healthy boundaries long walks self-care routine it's from a black owned business called Meraki um, I'll link it if you guys want to pick it up but I just have been carrying it all weekend and it's such great quality I just bought it um, but let me show you guys the books that I got and then I'll do like a little quick 
hopefully round up everything that I picked up this weekend because I got a lot of books. So, um, the first, well, for one, I got um, five books today. And then yesterday I got, let's see, I got one, two, three, oh my gosh, four, five, six, seven books yesterday. So yeah, that's, that's crazy. Seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12 books. I think that that's the most books I've picked up in like a long time. Like, oh my God, guys, this is crazy. I just got so many books. Oh, I feel like that's a lot, the most books I picked up in a very long time, but I just couldn't leave anything there because these a lot of these are books I hadn't heard of um, or been wanting to get. So um, let me show you guys what I picked up in the bookstore. So the first book I, bookstore I went to was uh, Open Books and I got uh, White Tears, Brown Scars, How White Feminism Betrays a Woman of Color. And I actually share this on Instagram. If you guys aren't following me there, you should because I share lots of book stuff. But um, I share this on Instagram and one of you guys DM me and you said that you read this and you absolutely loved it. You said that it had like a very easy style of writing so it was easy to read. It wasn't too like heavy um, or like bogged down. So like, you know, you didn't feel like it was too like highbrow if that makes sense and you like I got in the message um she said that there's like interview style in here so it's just really really easy to read which I thought was really cool um and yeah I just am excited to go through these and in the front it immediately starts talking about um how like these it just, it shows, I don't wanna like spoil the book or anything, but like it just shows a lot of different examples um, and stories in this that can like uphold the thought that they're sharing or like they're the things that they like want you to learn. So I'm really excited for this. It says this explosive book of history and cultural criticism argues that white feminism has been a weapon of white supremacy and patriarchy developed, deployed against black and indigenous women and all colonized women. It offers a long overdue validation of the experiences of women of color, taking us from the slave era when white women fought in court to keep ownership of their slaves through the centuries of colon col wow colonialism when they offered a soft face for brutal tactics to the modern workplace white tears brown scars tells the story of white women's active participation in campaigns of oppression examining subjects as varied as the hunger games alexandria ocasio cortez the viral B barbecue becky video and 19th century lynchings of mexicans in the american southwest ruby hammond builds a powerful argument about the entrenched systems of white supremacy that we are socialized within a reality that we must apprehend in order to fight so i just i cannot cannot wait this wait to read this um i feel like it's gonna be a good one i always like to learn and i feel like adding in these books are really um, good tools for that. Another book that I really like was I Am Still Here by Austin Channing Brown. Um, that's another good book, book to like learn about like racism and um, the way that black women and men are treated in society and it's told in like a way that I feel like is not too like, like it's just really easy to read and um, relatable. So, really love that. The second bookstore I went to, I got three books, and this bookstore had the most calming, like, just calming experience. It's called Madison Street Books, I think, or Madison Books, um, and I got three books. The first book that I got is, uh, Don't You Take This, Do You Take This Man? And it's about a woman who I think has, like, a business, um, where she's, like, an efficient, but she just kind of gets it because she's an efficient one time, and then, like, uh, someone makes a video of her being an efficient at a wedding, and it goes viral, and then everyone wants to have her as an efficient, and so I guess she makes this, like, her job, and then there's a guy named Lear, who's the event manager, um, and he's not a people person, he, like, doesn't believe in love, but they keep being thrown together because she's, like, officiating weddings, and he's, like, planning the weddings, and it says the two are surrounded by love at every turn, and their physical attraction pulls them together despite their best efforts to stay an arm's length apart. Lear refuses to get hurt 
word again, RJ refuses to let herself be vulnerable to anyone, but when it comes to Happily Ever After, their clients might not be the only ones to say I do. And this book um, is written by Denise Williams, which I've never read any of Denise Williams' books, and that really just shows me, like, there's so many black authors out there that I've never read books from, never heard about. Like, at least I don't think I've read anything of hers. Um, so it just makes me excited to learn about a new author and just like dive into the world of her books. And then, oh no, I didn't get this from there. Oh my gosh, I got this from Sandmeyer Bookstore. Um, I just looked at their bookmark. Yeah, I got this from the last bookstore I went to. So yeah, um, and then from Madison Street Books, Sandmeyer Bookstore was also really nice too. Uh, I really liked all the natural light that was in there and the floors were creaky. Like it just had that old like building vibe which was like really cool looking for books in there. Um, and this is where I found that book. And then the other three books that I got, um, these were from Madison Street Books and I picked up um, Nora Goes Off Script, which this is supposed to be a really good book. I've heard so many people say great things about it. Um, it says that Romance Channel screenwriter Nora Hamilton knows the formula for love better than anyone, but when her, go when her too good to work husband leaves her and their two kids, Nora turns her marriages her marriage is collapsed into the best script of her life. When it's picked up for a big screen and set to film at her home with former sexiest man alive, Leo Vance, cast as her ex-husband, Nora's life will never be the same. After shooting raps, Nora finds Leo on her porch with a half-empty bottle of tequila and a proposition. He'll pay a thousand dollars a day to stay for a week. She could use the money, but it's the need in his eyes that makes her say yes. Seven days. It's the blink of an eye or an eternity, depending on how you look at it. Enough time to fall in love, enough time to break your heart. And this is like a super quick read. It's like under 300 pages. So I feel like I'm gonna read this so fast um, Then I got a thriller that oh and that's um Nora goes off script by Annabelle uh, Monaghan and then this one is called do you take this man by Denise Williams and then White Tears, Brown Scars, How to, How White Feminism Betrays Women of Color by Ruby Hammond. I, you guys always ask all the time, like, can you share the authors? And I literally forget every time. So I'm trying to remember. Um, but this book, I actually was recommended by the girl who works at Madison Street Books. And she said, if you've read um, The Silent Patient, this is an incredible book to read. And I was like, oh my God, I've never heard about this thriller. And so I was like, I definitely want it. It's an international bestseller. And uh, it says, a window less shack in the woods, a dash to safety, but when a woman finally escapes her captor, the end of the story is only the beginning of her nightmare. She says her name is Lena. Lena, who disappeared without a trace 14 years prior. She hits the profile. She has a distinctive scar, but her family swears that she isn't their Lena. The little girl who escaped the woods with her with her knows things she isn't sharing and Lena's devastated father is trying to piece together details that don't quite fit. Lena is desperate to begin again but something tells her that her tormentor still wants to get back what belongs to him and that she may not be able to truly escape until the whole truth about what happened in the woods finally emerges. So this is actually written by someone in Germany and I think um, the lady at the bookstore was saying that the um, book was written in Germany and then I guess they changed the uh like written language to English and so it's her first English language debut book um but it's like was a hit obviously all over the world um so yeah this is by Rami Hossman and it's called Dear Child and then um another book that I got is Made in Manhattan by Lauren Lane I really love Lauren Lane's writing I feel like if you like Colleen Hoover, you'll really like her writing. It's super easy, just fun. Um, it says, this is reverse My Fair Lady for the modern era. It chronicles a p pampered Manhattan socialite who must teach a regular guy from Louisiana, from Louisiana how to fit, with, fit in with the upper crust. Um, and it says, for fans of Sally Thorne and Christina Lauren comes a sharp new romantic comedy that proves that the best version of Happily Ever After is the one you never saw coming. Um, so I think that's pretty self-explanatory, but I'm excited to read this one as well. This one is under 300 pages. So yeah, and then a quick recap of what I picked up yesterday. The Coldest Winter Ever by Sister Soldier. I got um, Happily Ever Afters by Elise Bryant. And uh, The Unfortunates by J.K. Chakwu, I think. Um, and then I got Night Crawling by uh, Layla Motley. <laughs> And Black Girls Must Be Magic by Jane Allen. Black Buck by Mateo Ascaripour. 
I'm so bad at pronouncing literally anything. I got the signed copy of On Rotation, which I already own this, but I bought the another book because I wanted it signed, and so I'm probably gonna just gift the other book to someone else, or maybe I'll put it in um, one of those like um, free libraries, like free little libraries, so someone can read it. And then Made in Manhattan, Dear Child, uh, White Tears, Brown Scars. <laughs> Uh, do you take this man and Nora goes off script so I hope you guys enjoyed this video I know it's kind of been a long one but I feel like this was just a fun little day together or a fun little weekend together where we could like just be very bookish and I wanted you guys to see all of that because I went to so many bookstores got so many books and um, just had the best time I definitely am gonna do this again I really think that I would never go back to Barnes & Noble if I had the ability to go to this many um, independent bookstores because I got so many more books and it was nice talking to the bookstore owners and talking to the people that work there and just live breathe and love books and I feel like I'm giving back to the community giving back to my state because I live in Illinois so yeah all good things and I will see you guys in the next one <laughs> bye guys <laughs>